I love Blaine. I think he's great. But he would do stuff like, I'm going to stick a needle through my face. And he would just <laughs> stick a needle through his face. And you're like, well, he's interesting. That's not magic. That's a needle through your face. Right. But that's a throwback to Houdini. I want to see your head get lopped off. <laughs> right. And then I want you to see tightrope between buildings. Like yeah. Chris, I think, was a mix between Copperfield, traditional magic, and what David was doing, where it was kind of edgy, this cool dude. Long hair, doing crazy shit. Yeah, I mean, he Those, had that weird, like, because it wasn't, it was that hard, it was like that, like, uh, heavy metal band magician. What is that? Yeah, like, that's the vibe. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's the Dane Cook of magic. <laughs> that's a very apt description. <laughs> I think that's probably the way to go. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah. I mean, he shouldn't be shirtless anymore, by the way. I'm sorry, brother. You're in better shape than me. I know it. I'm a fan. <laughs> but you look like a brujuto. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Ghostbed. I'm telling you, the thing that I really know is that you need a good night's sleep. If you're exhausted, if you're messed up, it's, it's not going to be good for my shows. It's not going to be good for productivity. It's not going to be good for all the podcasting I do. I need to get sleep. You need to get shut eye to get your A game. That's why comedian or not, doesn't matter whatever you do, a good mattress is really important to sleep well and perform your best. For over two decades, the team at Ghostbed has been making super high quality mattresses with premium materials and patented cooling features so you sleep better, cooler, and more comfortable from the moment your head hits the pillow. Take advantage of free shipping, a 101 night mattress sleep trial, and financing starting at $35 a month. Most orders ship within 24 hours so you can start sleeping better this week. I'm telling you, this mattress is awesome. I have them in my house. You got to go take advantage of this sponsor. Listeners can get 40% off all products site-wide. You get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories. Or you can get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code YKWD at ghostbed.com slash YKWD for 40% off site-wide. Limited time only. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp which I need doing this podcast because the people I work with on it drive me batty, especially this time of year, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, and all the other holidays, New Year's. It's a stressful time. Where do I go? What do I do? Who's coming where? What am I getting her? What are they getting me? Did they get me some crappy stuff? Did I get that? I mean, it's stressful, anxiety, fearful. All that stuff comes into play. It can be a lot, a lot sad anxiety, man. But you know what? You can add something new to your life. You can add a little positivity to it. You can add a little therapy to it. Therapy can be the bright spot amidst all the crazy stuff that's about to happen. You can look forward to talking to somebody once, twice, three times, as many times as you want a week and letting it out and telling them what's going on. So your family and your loved ones and your friends don't have to feel and deal with the stress and anxiety and sadness. They can just have you, you who you are, the good person, the happy person. You can feel good feelings and love and all the stuff the holidays are supposed to make you feel. That's what you can feel if you go and check out BetterHelp. Look at man, if you're thinking about starting therapy, try BetterHelp. Just try it. It's entirely online. You don't have to leave your house. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule, which is amazing. It's right there in your phone, on your computer. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime you want at a no additional charge. You like this guy? Great. If you don't, boom. If you want a girl, get a girl. If you can't, just switch it up. I'm telling you, give the best you this season, this holiday season, you can give by going to BetterHelp. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash dude today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash dude. DraftKings Casino is bringing you only the best. Classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots, plus exclusive games you won't find anywhere else. I love it because I can play blackjack without getting freaked out being at a table and all these other people watching. 
And I love roulette. Roulette's awesome. One of the funnest games ever. I always play 17 Black. Everybody knows that. 17 Black, it's the best. Download DraftKings Casino app now and use code WHATDUDE. New players can deposit $5 or more and get a matchup of $500 in casino credits. That's code WHATDUDE. Only at DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gamblers. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 Physically present in the Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opt-in and new customers. Minimum $5 deposit. Maximum match of $500 in casino credits, which requires a one-time playthrough within seven days. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players. Choice for eligibility. Terms and responsibility. Gaining resources. Yeah, baby. We're starting the podcast right now. We're back. You know what, dude? Live. Welcome, everybody, to the show. YKW. I started the social media podcast. <laughs> The YKWD Podcast. YKWD is back again. Old school, back in the day, where it all started, before them all. YKWD. YKWD. This podcast is so fun and crazy. It has no rules. Shut up, you're ruining this. First of all, damn it, man. Sorry, it's a comedy podcast. This isn't NPR. That's what this podcast does. Is there any better show? This is the original. Original. What's up, everybody? What's happening? Welcome back to You Know What Dude podcast, the longest running podcast on the East Coast. We're here above the Comedy Cellar at the Comedy Cellar Studios, and uh, I'm very excited tonight. Why? Because we have a magical night. (laughs) We have a magical night. I mean, he's just magical. He was on the podcast a long time ago and now he's back on by himself (laughs) and I just want to say with all respect (laughs) ta-da I feel like you're using magical as a word as a code word for something Harrison (laughs) Green (laughs) yes I am I am you you picked that up this is how they do it in the 50s oh that that guy uh, Bachelor is is real magical (laughs) listen (laughs) Loves the magic, if you know what I mean. He loves making stuff disappear. <laughs> Listen, dude. I mean, let's just get it out of the way. Let's just get it on the table. Yes. Let's just do it. Let's just talk about it. Hamas. Rhymes with Hamas. <laughs> but it's stuff you put in your ass. Listen. Wait, what rhymes with Hamas? Stuff you put in your ass. Ah, uh, oh, ass <laughs> and Hamas in your ass, Hamas, brother. Listen, I don't remember that from Doctor Seuss. It was a stretch. <laughs> you are gay. <laughs> Wait, did you talk to my parents before you did this? Is that what's happening? Listen, this is an interve- <laughs> this is an intervention, <laughs> Harrison. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> I've known you for a long time. Yeah. Maybe you don't even know how long we've known each other. 20 years. At least. Yeah. I, well, the first time I ever saw I was a fan before I ever met you. Really? I was getting into comedy in college. I was a kid magician, and then in college, I started really getting into stand-up on its own as an art form. And I went to Jones Beach. I saw you at the Open Anthony at Jones Beach yeah. Amphitheater. Uh, I remember that. And I got, I got your signature, and I was very excited. You did? Yeah. And then when I got to meet you for the first time, like on, do, being on a show together, it was a, it was a real thrill. At the cellar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a full circle moment for me. Um, well, here's the thing. I've known you for a long time. And one of the last times we've seen each other was during the pandemic. On Zoom. That's right. And I had said to you, by then, and I've said it over the years, <laughs> Harrison, you're gay. <laughs> and you do the illusion. And you pull some whammy shit. And during the pandemic, I was like, dude, show, come on, dude, stop. You're like, I'm not. I was like, come on, show me the purple dildo, big purple dildo. You went, hang oh, on. that I have, yes, of course. You had a purple <laughs> dildo. Yeah, like right off camera. It was dude. easily accessible. <laughs> Either you're the, here's the thing. Either you're the best magician in the world or you're gay. I'll make it even worse. Do you know who bought that dildo? 
my mom. <laughs> what? Yes. Why? I bought her an Amazon Echo. I thought it was a nice <laughs> gift. And every time I would visit and she wasn't in the room, I would whisper to the Amazon Echo, order a dildo. <laughs> and it would add it to her cart. And so she would have all these dildos in her cart and she thought Amazon was broken. She would call me. She's like, I keep trying to order stuff. I have to keep canceling orders. They just keep trying to give me dildos. And because it's this woman, according to the algorithm, they see this woman who's desperate to buy a dildo but keeps deleting it. So all the suggestions are dildo-based suggestions. So any suggestion is like, I want another dildo. I want lube. I want all this stuff. So this goes on for like years. Yes. Finally, I'm drunk at Thanksgiving, so I just yell across the room in front of the whole family, order some dildos. Right. And she's like, it was you? <laughs> and then weeks later, a dildo arrived really? at my apartment in an Amazon box. From her? Well, I didn't know who it was from. I go, right. what a blessed life <laughs> that I get a dildo anonymously in the mail, and I can think of five people off the top of my head who could have been the person who sent it to me. Right. And then I texted my mom. I was like, "Were you the? did you send me a dildo? She said, don't say I never got you nothing. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So my mom bought me that dildo. That, and have you used it? I've used it in my act. In your what? <laughs> my magic act. Oh, thank God. I thought you said something else. I thought you pronounced ass differently. A mask. I used it in my acts. <laughs> Asks. Um, look, I don't care if you're gay. <laughs> my wife would care. <laughs> I think your wife is an illusion. <laughs> I think that's the... <laughs> you're, you're like the prestige. <laughs> you, um... No, I mean... Whatever. I'm a registered independent. What? <laughs> dude, dude, you are as fun as a gay guy could ever be. There we go. Gay guys are the funnest people in the world to I... me. And you are hilarious. You laugh like Liza Minnelli. <laughs> you have the hand. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? There we go. <laughs> it's crazy. So you have a wife you married. Yeah. Not I'm married gay. in June. Not gay. You remind me of Louis Schaefer. Remember Louis Schaefer? Yes. Louis yeah, Schaefer, yeah. not gay, remember? <laughs> yeah. They're going to say Kevin Meany. <laughs> no, no, he was gay. Yes, exactly. He was gay. But married to a lady for a long time. I know. Yeah, so when are you He had that get... great joke. He goes, how do you come out to your wife of like, whatever, 15 years? He goes, you stand at the top of the stairs and you go, I am what I am. <laughs> well, Kevin, it killed me. He's awesome. Gone way too soon. Yeah, terrible. He died a heart attack on his couch. I didn't know it was Dude, on the couch. Yeah, what did he die of? Was it from gaining and losing weight or heart problems or something? Heart attack, I don't right? No. Yeah. Now, if we had a producer that could Google it <laughs> instead of just listening to the show because he's a fan of magic. <laughs> well, Danny, I, uh, you probably know, you know it's right. Was I, my magic camper? All right, hang on one second. We're going to get into this magic. <laughs> don't ever bury the. I don't want to. I got a long way to go with you, son. <laughs> I mean, dude, you laugh like fucking. I mean, like you run a circus. Or you're and I have this like old man wheeze now because I've done so much vocal damage. So funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, you have this thing where people think you're gay, but you're married. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Someday I will win the bet. <laughs> Someday Norton will pay me money. <laughs> um, is it is it because now you got married? How, who? Where'd you meet your wife? Tinder. What? We met on Tinder. What? Yeah. Really. We actually matched on Bumble, I sure. found out later. Are you sure it wasn't Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you laugh at all my jokes. Um, yeah. So you met her on Tinder, and then what? Uh, we had a date pretty quickly after that. Really? Uh, that didn't go well at the beginning. Why? I thought it was clear that I was saying, like, hey, come meet up with me. I'm going to do a show, and then we'll go out to dinner. And she thought it was, this is the time after you're done with work, and then we could just go hang out. Yeah. So she was like, who's this asshole who's dragging me around to shows? She didn't think that that was part of the date. And then we didn't start liking each other until hours later. We went to an Italian restaurant late at night. We started talking about our actual like lives. Right. And then we realized there was like a little bit of a connection. What is she? She is uh, Nebraskan. Really? What does she do for work? Works for uh, a phone company, Verizon. Oh, she's just, yeah. A civilian. No shit. Yeah, yeah. A muggle. A, that, a what? A muggle. Yeah. So are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing Harry Potter references. I mean, I know what they are, which is I'm culpable. I mean, I'm a magician. My name is Harrison. I'm pretty close. <laughs> You're pretty close. <laughs> um, so, but you got into ma now. Here's the thing: you were a comic, and I knew you as a stand-up. I didn't know you as a magician. That was on purpose. For I really kept. I wanted to keep them. I I was joked that I. I kept my career separate the way like a preschool teacher like hides her burlesque career. <laughs> like just you, there's a duffel bag with or, pasties in the corner. Well, there's another scenario you could use. <laughs> <laughs> Only fans. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no. <laughs> you can you sure use, you don't want to talk about Hamas. You could use the other. <laughs> we can talk about Hamas. Um, 
Dude, because this is the thing I don't understand with magician comics. Danny refuses. <laughs> and Joe, Joe Russell, my my other guy here. Does magic too? Yes. Wow. His room has, you know, I don't know why you guys always got to get some type of Houdini memorabilia fucking hacks. <laughs> These are Houdini's. It's not the cufflinks, but it's a key that went into one of his. It's like, ugh. <laughs> it's some fucking picture of that dumb idiot, you know, looking weird. At it, you know what I mean? But he did it. They will not. They don't like to mix the two. They don't want people knowing they do magic. They, <laughs> Danny will not do anything. I wanted to have a magic off between these two fucking autistic <laughs> twins. He will not. He will quit the show. He is serious. I've offered to pay him. He will not do magic. That's want- on the questionnaire, right? When they're analyzing where you are on the spectrum. Yes. Do you like magic? And yes. You get like three points if you say yes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You get five points. <laughs> he will not do magic. He will not do it. And you wanted to separate. Why? Why? Why is it bad? Magic to me is awesome. Magic is amazing. Magic makes me smile. I love magic. I, I love it too. Um, I think for me, I, I started off as a kid magician. Uh, freshman year of college, I was... Do, I was like barking for stage time, just standing on a street corner, you know, for two hours at a time to get five minutes at the end of the show. And I remember I was putting sponge balls in my back pocket right before my set. And a comedian comes up to me and goes, what the fuck are you doing? And I go, it's a magic trick. This way, if the jokes don't work, I got like a finale. Yeah. And he's like, you'll never learn how to do stand up if you have that kind of safety net. And that advice changed my life. Uh, and so I realized if I want to do stand-up, I want to do it on its own merits. And I wanted comics, before they knew I did magic, to just, like, respect me as a comedian right. without thinking I had this crutch. Because, like, you, you you open a wallet and a fire shoots out the top. The audience is going to clap. That's going to be fun. I mean, Tom Dustin? <laughs> That's true. You know Tom Dustin? <laughs> of course. I was, a, I was a Boston guy. Here's the thing. Tom Dustin, hilarious comic, by the way. So funny. Used to close with a fire wallet. He would sell them, right? He, he would sell them after the show. And I went up to him, I go, it's not even a joke. Like, it's not even part. He goes, I go, why would you sell something that's not comedy? What are you doing? He goes, I did the math. <laughs> and I could buy these for this, and I sell them for this. I make the most money. It was a total right. fucking profit margin. There's 70 houses in the Boston area that have burned down because, because he gave them that ha- wallet. I have one in my house. <laughs> I have one. I have one. It's- Those are not safe. <laughs> They're not safe. They just have fire shooting out of a thing. Yes, it's it's crazy to me. But he, you, like Danny, it's like I understand it because I used to have uh, buck teeth was my closer. <laughs> oh, like fake buck teeth? What are you laughing at? Yes, <laughs> I had fake buck teeth, and that was my closing five ten minutes. I would come up and I'd put them in. I'd be like, "Hey, a goofy vampire." Duh. I would be like, "Don't." Put these in and go to a hardware store and go, do you get a file? <laughs> they didn't give you the tonight show immediately? <laughs> well, what happened was one time I forgot them. Oh, shit. And I had a show, and I, I, I had to do a lot of time, and I didn't have my buck teeth. And that's the night I realized, dude, you cannot rely on anything but your thoughts, your uh, opinion, and your stories. Exactly. Your jokes. You have to have jokes. If you don't have jokes... You'll get caught out there one day and you'll be fucked. So I understand. Yeah. I want to be able to just do an hour and not have anything. To and you did, dude. You would come. I remember yeah. when you came to, you know, look, we all fucked with you back in the day <laughs> because you, I mean, <laughs> you know, you're coming to, this is going to understand. He's coming to the comics table with Patrice, <laughs> Norton, Keith, yeah. me, Voss, Geraldo, Quinn. And here comes this magic happy gay guy that's not gay i was like ecstatic to be there and yeah. i was like this is gonna really hurt me <laughs> it, i'm so happy and i can't hide it you didn't get hurt though you never really took anything personal no i loved it the very first day i sat down at the cellar table keith was there and i know keith before i got passed and uh he just goes oh congratulations it's so great you're here what are you working on and i start to tell him and he goes nobody gives a shit you <laughs> dummy <laughs> And then everybody laughed, and he goes, no, 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 tell me what you're working on. And so I started saying, he goes, we still don't give a shit, you dummy. I got to call him right now. I'm going to curse him off <laughs> for doing that to you. I'm going to call him right now. I really, that makes me mad. No, that was the great, I was like, this is the perfect introduction to the seller. No, I mean, it really makes me happy inside. But yeah. 
<laughs> Here we go. Ready? I'm going to tell him. See what he's... He might have changed, though, because he had two strokes. He's a different guy. He's a little mellower. He's a little different now, so maybe he changed a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's going <laughs> to... I mean, he's probably not going to answer because he's in bed because he's 85. Do <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But he's changed. I think he's changed. He's definitely not going to answer after these calls. He's looked at the phone already. Probably tried to jerk off with his left hand because he has to. <laughs> All right, there you go. You know who I'm going to call? Yeah, I know who I'll call. I'm going to call this person right now. You ready? <laughs> All right. This person has changed, and we're going to see. Remember Rich Voss? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's see what Rich has to say. Rich, <laughs> he's changed too. He's 66. I, I'll tell you the first thing he ever said to me. <laughs> right, go ahead. Oh, it's good. I'm watching the show with Bonnie. I mean, I forget that all my friends are in their 60s and they go to bed at 8.30. Right. This sucks. They got kids, they got to wake up early. I mean, hang on. He's, I know he's watching TV with Bonnie right now <laughs> with his snack. And she has some vegan snack that she made. Name, number, number reason. <laughs> Ugh. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, right. you may hang up or press one for more <laughs> options. I'm here with Harrison Greenbaum right now, and he's about to tell me the mean thing you said to him the first time you met. <laughs> and I bet it's mean. I was calling you because I told him you've changed over the years. You're not that guy anymore. So, But you're in bed because you're 66. Fucking <laughs> asshole. What did he say to you? Well, so, and to be clear, I love Rich, and he's been very supportive. Um, but... What? The first time I ever met him yes. um, was at that Jones Beach thing. There was that autograph table. So you could line up and you could, everybody would sign your thing. I was there. Yeah. So you signed the thing. I still have the ticket. It's like everybody's signature's on it. Patrice is on there. Louis. Um, I'm, I'm so excited because this is the first time I've ever met like real comedians. Sure. I'm so pumped. And <laughs> Rich sees me like from across the table. I'm like two away from him. He just goes, what are you smiling at? And that was my introduction to Rich Paul. I know you're going to cancel Rich. I mean, Jesus Christ, Harrison. I mean, dude, you can't. He meant it in jest. It was a jest. It was not a hate oh, crime. Oh, the good old days. Not a hate crime. Oh, when you can call a, a f a f right? But truly. <laughs> That used uh, to be my own. <laughs> anyway. It was what? It was your opening? I, didn't, I had an opening. Of that. What was it? Now I'm going to get canceled. No, you won't. Uh, you no, can't. It's based you on are warrants. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was, I used to do a lot of. That's uh, like me saying WAP. <laughs> I used to do a lot of musical theater in uh, high school and college. You're my gay. nickname. You're <laughs> fucking gay. I am what I am. <laughs> <laughs> you could sacrifice your sack row, sit and in the back row. What is that one? That's Gypsy. What? Okay. Now we're starting. Now I'm getting a little vibes. I'm gay too. <laughs> I wanted you on this Gypsy's podcast. Gypsy's a deep cut. <laughs> I'm deep gay. That's a deep cut there. That's it a, with that shirt and that musical reference. I thought you said you like my shirt. That's I love it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Do it again. Explode. Oh. Comes back. Okay, Whoa. there you go. All right. What was happening? What was your bit? Oh, it was, I did a lot of musical theater in high school and college, so my nickname was... Yeah? That was the bit. Oh, <laughs> that was the bit. Oh, you had to pause. It was a long time you ago. You didn't pause. Right, I, I get pause. It. My nickname was... Yeah. And then I would say the word. Back which I was called that a bunch in high school, so I yeah, felt like I was course. owning that in that bit. But Yeah, I mean, listen, man. It is weird because there is a thing that goes along with the, um, you know... The way you act. <laughs> and why is that, though? Why are you... So you're not gay? No. Listen, okay, here's the thing. If we come back in five years and you're <laughs> fucking Kevin Meany singing on the top of your thing to your wife, <laughs> goodbye, you slut bag, I'm going to be mad. That's fair. That's 100% fair. Right, so you, 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 you don't get, So you're just saying it's okay to be mad in five years, you asshole. No, I'm, I'm saying that, that, was, that didn't you, happen. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Have you ever kissed a man? <laughs> I mean, lots of shit goes on in college. <laughs> I'm done. It's your I'm out. I, I just wanted to lead you. I'm, on. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, well, don't blow it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, dude, I don't care if you're gay or not. 
Um, I'm glad to have you on the show. We'll move on from that because it's getting old. <laughs> <laughs> We're just being two old queens. Um, <laughs> goddamn stupid. And we old. are on thrones. <laughs> we are. Th- <laughs> I know we are. On th- those are the queen's chairs, though. These are king's chairs. Oh, that's the alpha male chair. Oh, <laughs> you gonna have kings? I mean, kids. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, how old are you now? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. So you're still young. Yeah, around the corner, maybe. Yeah. My wife is thirty, so she's she's all the time. Right, 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 right. And um, it, it does your wife ever say that like you does does she like people give her when you met her parents were they like oh this guy's gay? Well, I have the joke. Um, I love your jokes about being gay. Really <laughs> well, no, I have. There's a line where I go, she, uh, my I used to be girlfriend, my girlfriend. She's imaginary, but definitely a girl. So that was like a line in there. Right. So when. She, People will come. She got used to it. In the beginning, I think she didn't like it as much, but then she, she kind of went along. But like, she would meet, she'd be with me after a show, and they go, "Oh my god, she's not imaginary." And originally, now she leans into it. She's like, "See, I'm real." <laughs> so like, over time, she embraced. Right, it. right, right. Does she love magic? I think she likes it. Yeah, and you she knows know? a lot of the terms now and stuff because she's like been in that world. But is she like my wife? Doesn't give a fuck about jokes anymore. You know, what right. I mean? every once in a while, I'll make her laugh. But she, yeah, just go make the money, funny boy. Is she, is she like magic to me? Flips me out. I don't want to know the tricks. I don't want to know. I want to be in the, you know, and some people are like, dude, it's tricks. I know. She's she's seen, she knows way more than the average bear. Like, she knows way more, like. So she's she's seen behind the curtain on so some she, of them. Th- there's times, and she knows, like, specific terms. Right. Like, she's she's not just, like, a, an, the, what a magician would call, like, a lay person. She knows a lot more. Right. But she still loves it. Like, I took the, the first time I ever took her to magic camp, all the kids swarmed <laughs> her because she's, like, a non, <laughs> non-magician. Stop. And she loved it. Stop. What did you just say to me? Magic camp. What, what is magic camp? Are you sure this is? <laughs> isn't that where so they, you know those like? Isn't that where you? You know those conversion therapy, those Christian camps where, yeah. like, where they convert, where like sure. Christian kids go to go from gay, gay to straight. Yeah, gay to straight. So Tana's magic camp is the exact opposite. It's to go from straight to gay. <laughs> so you, Jews go. So you, they go from straight to gay. No. Tannins is like uh, I would not be the person I am without is this, that camp. This is what's it called? I, a Tannin's Magic Camp. It's the it's greatest yours? thing in the world. No, it's you're just I, part, you're a teacher there. I was a camper, okay. and then I became a counselor. I've been going for 20 years. Wow. Yeah. So it's like Jewish camp for magic kids. Pretty much, yeah. Like, can it, yeah. Is this it right here? What is that? Why are you, oh. why are you doing this? Why is it going small? Oh. Is this, oh, what is this? Oh, Lord. What is this? Oh, I know what this is. What is it? Tell me. Oh, is this that is you? not going to help anything. Is this uh, you? <laughs> so I, I just finished my run. I did 650 shows headlining uh, Cirque du Soleil show. Okay, wait a second. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, so that's what this is from. This, this is, from is from Cirque du Soleil. Show. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to watch this right now because I want to talk about magic. I got to talk <laughs> up to the lead up to this. These guys yeah. are fucking burying me. And then we're going to have nothing to get to. <laughs> no, you, you do want to watch it. It's, it's very gay. <laughs> Danny, you know what? You're goddamn right. <laughs> yeah, so. You know what? Sometimes you So just, just gotta, to give you context for this. I mean, I mean dude, there's no context needed. Okay. Uh, this is the finale number, I think, right? This is, yeah. you yeah. You were in Cirque du Soleil. I had, I'm the first ever comedian to headline a Cirque du Soleil show. Okay, what, where, and what? Which Cirque? Because there's a bunch of them. Yeah, so I get a call. This is May 2021. Yeah. I get a call saying, hey, can you come for one day? We need a fill-in for one day. We're in the process of launching a Cirque du Soleil show called Mad Apple. It's a New york theme Cirque du Soleil show at New York, New York, about New York. We don't want to do clowns. We think if you're going to do New York, you should have stand-up comedians. That's where the funny comes from. Yeah. So I was like, this sounds cool. So I, I pack for, it's one day. It's a one-nighter. I'm just going to do this one show. I do the show. MGM is there. Cirque's there. Um, they go, you know what? Do you want to you stay for like, stay for one more day? We like you. Stay for one more day. Okay. Then they go, stay for the whole week. We have shows the whole week. Really? All these preview shows. We're doing. And money. They talk money? Or they just... No, they, not... They're floating money. But they, you're not getting paid. Oh, no. I'm getting paid. Yeah, yeah. Good I'm money? Paid. Yeah, yeah. And they're putting you up. And they're putting me up. Where are they putting you up? At New York, New York. So I'm okay. in fake New York. Just a regular room? Uh, nice room. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at the By the end of the week, I'm like, I got to fly back. Like... Yeah. I'm starting to... Like, I have gigs. Right. Uh, and they sent, they give me a contract for a year and a half. Really? Yeah, they're like stick uh, stick around. <laughs> so you got a residency. So overnight, I went from I'm just good. Like I flew out. I told my she was my then fiance. Hey, I have this quickie gig in. She so had to live there. All of a sudden, I'm like, hey, so we're gonna have to pack all of our shit up. So I lived in that hotel for a month and a half. Because when you do a residency, it's every day except Monday. Well, so it's Cirque du Soleil. So it's actually we did ten shows a week, <sighs> every week. So I did 650 shows in a year and a half. 
people don't know in Vegas, it's it's never ending. When you yeah. even when you do stand up there, you do, it's it's tr- chilled a little bit, but you're doing shows every night. Sometimes two shows a night, except for Mondays. Usually Mondays is yeah. dark. But we're doing two shows every single night. Every single night you're doing two shows. Yeah. Wow. And I was headlining the show. So I was doing about 30 or 40 minutes of the show. So, so you come out at the end of the show. minutes every and, night. And you're doing what? I'm doing a lot of stand-up and then some of the magic. And we talk about how I reincorporated magic back into my stand-up act. And this is the end of the show right so here. At the end of the show, it's a big Cirque du Soleil show. Yeah. So I, I do have to dance. <laughs> I'm sure you added that. I'm sure they were like, you know, we don't need dance. You're like, well, no. Like, if I'm um, gonna do this, I'm gonna do it right. You know yeah. what? You're you're pretty close. Well, Bob, they're like, you can just stand on stage and clap. And I'm like, I'm not gonna clap when everybody else is dancing. Yeah, you're not gonna clap when that groove hits your tush. It's gonna move anyways, right? Yeah, I'm gonna be dancing. You're gonna be dancing. What's up, Danny? <laughs> you just said what I was gonna say. Okay, good. Where did you get this angle? Where's this from? I heard I had, I had spies come. Oh my it. god, that's amazing. So this is from early, early days. Am I actually dancing in this one? Yes. Let's go. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Whoa. I have nightmares about this dance because I had to do it 650 times. I need to see it again. That's all he has? I can give you the full length one if you really want to get in there. I do want to see. Is there any? <laughs> Could I you send to... it to me somehow? Do you have it do on you, have you? It? Do you have it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we could actually show it to the people because it's Cirque's property. But... Oh, damn. Okay. Can but we, Bobby can describe it. I would like to see this just one more. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. I will describe this. You could, uh, yeah. You give a I play want, by play. I want you to think of if you saw a flock of gay birds. <laughs> <laughs> well, so play that again. Let's see if I have a long. Oh my God! You love it. <laughs> You're more into it than the dancers. <laughs> No, the dancers are into it. No way, dude. That guy in the jacket right there, are those all dancers? No, the guy in the jacket is Chris Turner. He was with the show for the first three months. Is he a magician? Chris Turner, the, the guy from The Cellar, the freestyle rapper guy, British what, guy. What does comedian. he do? What does he do? He did uh, a, a segment where he did the freestyle rap, so he had all the audience members yell out things, then he makes a rap from it. I'm so not. Imp- can I just say something? Everybody's <laughs> fucking dick gets hard for that. It, I get it. It's, it's, it's math. I mean, the, in the show, it was really effective because there was like a whole subway set and they get graffitied on the wall as they say the thing. Mm-hmm. Is he still cool. in it? No, no. So he was, he was the first three months. And then as, as, after, the, after the first three months, I was all, all of the comedy. So I was doing these. Why like, did he leave? The, he was signed up for three months. That's it? Yeah. Are they going to have him back? Or is yeah, the show going, over? Yeah. No, the show's still going. It's still, still going. going. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We I don't know what they're doing with it. but Who's that black going. guy? That's the musical guy. What does uh, he do? He sings. He's like the musical director. So he okay. sings all the songs. He's the lead. Are you the only magician? I'm the only comedian, yeah. Are you the, a magician, though? Do you do magic? There's a, there's a magician that does a pre-show close-up thing. So there's like a secret VIP area. So if you get to the show early, there's this other magician that might like pull you into a little room and do like a magic trick. And he you. sucks you off? I mean, who knows what happens in the okay. room? No, I don't think so. He pulls you in a room and just starts blowing you? I mean... And then a quarter comes out of your dick hole? I mean, I feel and it, like... And then he puts it in your ear and he goes like that? I feel like we'd have insanely good reviews if that's what he did. <laughs> and then he goes, shh. Yeah, shh, don't tell. Uh, uh, let's see. So I'm trying to find a good version of the whole dance. Oh, we just need a little more of it. I just need a little more. I can, I can see it on your phone if you want. Oh, sure. Yeah, let me see you on... I need to see you on the phone. Yeah. I feel Because like hear... I love Circus Olay. I can put yeah, the... Yeah, there we go. All right, here we go. Is the volume up? Oh, yeah. Oh my God, dude! You. <laughs> Who's talking? The, the black. Uh, that, that's a. There's there's the musical director when he's not there. They. I mean, there's all subs for different things. Where? Are you, why are you running back to? The oh, band? so that was a bit that I came up with on my own. So at the very end of this dance thing, we go look at the audience and we go, you know, you have to sing along with us. So we we show them what they're supposed to do. And then, like with any of these call and response things, the first time yeah. they do it, we're very disappointed with them. I can't believe we didn't get enough energy. Let's do it one more time. That like classic. Um, and we're supposed to be very disappointed with them. And so it started off where everybody just kind of be like, you know, wave or like be like, come on, we need better. And so 650 shows is Groundhog's Day. You have to do something to like keep yourself in it. Sure. So I would try to exit the stage in a different way every time because I was so upset they wouldn't sing with us. So sometimes I would try to sneak into this cab. I would climb over the audience. Everybody in the cast knew I was trying to leave and their job was to keep me on, but they didn't know 
which cast member would be responsible for keeping me in. Right. So it was, a, it was just basically a, a giant game of tag. So I, just I was, to keep you guys fresh and have fun yourselves. Yeah. So that that right. that that's what that video is showing. One and of the you, ways that I in, ran off. In Cirque du Soleil, you can do that stuff. There's not some French guy yelling at you. Uh, the the can be <laughs> right. Yeah. It's it's a weird it's a weird thing. I I was very. When I joined the show, I, th- I, I said, my set, like, the things around me, do whatever you want, but, like, when I'm in my set, like, what jokes I do, what tricks I do, any of that stuff needs to be in my control 100% of the time. You can't put that in your contract. Yeah, I was like, that's, I need that. Otherwise, I can't, this is not going to be worth it for it's me. It's not going to work. And, and the, if I do the same exact set 650 times, you kill I, yourself. It, yeah, it'd be awful. So, you signed There's so this- many ways to kill yourself in a Cirque du Soleil show. <laughs> you could jump from a tall thing. You yeah. could, there's so many exciting ways. Yeah, you could have a, a really small Chinese person fall on you. That wouldn't hurt. That's true. Meet <laughs> um, some really talented acrobats. So, okay, I, there's too much to unpack here. I really, because I've been to, I love Circus Soleil. It's, I've seen I mean, oh, those are incredible. Oh, is an unbelievable human. But I've also seen the cheap one here in New York that's not Circus Soleil. It's just called Cirque. Well, yeah, because they don't own the French word for circus. So yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of those. Yeah, dude. I, me and my wife went and saw Cirque, and it sucked. <laughs> they had a fucking jungle gym and a seesaw. <laughs> And we were like, what the fuck? Going from O, which is epically magical. I think it cost them $200 million to put O together. It, like, that's unfathomable. That's crazy. It's worth every penny. It's unbelievable, yeah. O in Vegas, if you have a chance to see any of the circs, go see that. That was really great. It was crazy, except when we went with my wife and her parents, and they were very old at the time. I looked over halfway through. Sleeping. She was just sleeping in her <laughs> neck. In a wheelchair, but we did get in first because she was in a wheelchair. Oh, that's nice. I used every ounce of that wheelchair in Vegas <laughs> when I was with them. Um, okay, so this like, show also, this show is a smaller version of O, right? It's, it, it's very different. So it's like it's, O is, is based on water and dreams. That's how I think they would describe it. Right. Um, o is a play on the fact that the French word for water is, is O. It's essentially pronounced the word O. Right. Um, Mad Apple was like the New York one. So they wanted to have this New York spin on every kind of. Are there acrobats? Are there? Is there all kinds? Yeah, of so like crazy the acrobats things? and what's called the Wheel of Death are dressed like they're coming from Wall Street, holding a business suit. Oh. The, there's a there was a bridge thing, where it's sort of a replica of Brooklyn Bridge that they were swinging from. Mm-hmm. So every act has there's the Carrying Games comes out of a taxi. They're they're trying to use that New York thing for each. So what do you stuff. come out? I don't understand how stand up can come out at the end of something like that when it's very theatrical based. It's very big. It's very. <laughs> I mean, what am I talking about? No, yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. What the fuck am I talking? About? I was like. Like, I feel like you're just setting it up perfectly. You. I come up out of an elevator. Like, like you know, the, the okay. very first day they go, this is all the ways that this elevator will kill you if you stand in the wrong place. Really? Yeah. You and can die. Was, oh, my God. There's there's these giant screws that bring you up. So they're like, if your hand goes anywhere near your screws, no hand. And the two main companies that make lifts uh, are Otis and Schindler. And so I'm like, you really want the Jewish performer to be killed by Schindler's lift? <laughs> And that was a literal, that would have been my obituary had I stepped in the wrong, the wrong side of the mark. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun good. to come out of an elevator. Yeah. Uh, except every once in a while, um, they would, the timing would be off. And so, cause it's like, da 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 da, they're big music, big lighting. Yeah. And then it's right on the spot where I'm supposed to be already there. And I just start. Yeah. I'm already holding my microphone. And, uh, but once in a while, it's just not time. So I'm just ahead, <laughs> still rising. Oh, no but shit. But I got to start the act. <laughs> So you start it. So I start it. So what do you say? Like, I, what... oh, you just make fun of the situation. You're like a $20 million show and they can't fucking get the elevator timing oh. right. And they... You swear? Yeah. So that was the other thing. I had to be uncensored. I was like, I can't do this if I'm censored. So you, because they don't swear or no? They don't it's swear a in any thing. of the circles. No. Yeah. And they let you do that. Yeah. Wow. So you come up and then what, do you, what is your, okay, if, if everything goes perfect, you come up and you're there. What's the first joke? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand how you could do that. The first joke, actually, I went right into the act. Um, and then I... Uh, what is it? What do you say? Uh, so excited. I'd be like, how's everybody doing? Uh, excited to be here. Um, I just got married to a girl from Nebraska, which is a fun sentence to say, because different parts of it are surprising to each of you. Okay. And then I do the whole bit. Okay, what's the bit? <laughs> you don't have to do it if you don't want. Oh, yeah. No, it's, uh, uh, girl, I married a girl from Nebraska. Surpri- it's hard to do it from the middle out now. Um, yeah. Different parts of it are surprising to each of you, right? He was like, married, what? A girl, no, Nebraska, get the fuck out of here. Okay, Too yeah. many plot twists for a single sentence. Okay, great. So you're doing these bits and you're into it. Has it ever been a night where they're not laughing at it? Oh my God. There, it's, I, I mean, the first, I did, my sets were kind of broken up throughout the show. So my first chunk is the biggest chunk. It was like a 20 minute chunk. 20 minutes? That's and it ended lot. with a magic trick. Okay, what's um, the trick at the end? It's a trick I call the fuck you card trick. So it's a perfect thing for a New York show. Yeah. 
It's a trick that I invented. Uh, you invented it. Yeah, all the tricks in my act are original. You so you came up with your own tricks. Well, so yeah. So the idea was I was doing. I loved magic. There's there's an old saying, that, and then the magician came up with about like. Uh, Magic is awesome. It's magicians who ruin it. <laughs> so I love magic, the art of magic. But as I d did more comedy and I was keeping them separate, I was like, oh, comedians are actual artists who are writing their own shit. Like they have an idea about something. They write the bit. And if somebody else has that bit, they take it out. Like it's very much about coming up with your own point of view, your own material. Yeah, for and some magic... of us. Some people just take people's stuff. But go ahead. <laughs> well, those yeah. people. But also there is there are norms in comedy where if you are a hack or a thief, I people frown upon it. Right. There, there are mechanisms. Some, but of them, in magic, you want to take other people's tricks. You no, you shouldn't. That's the but whole make thing. Make it your own, though. But I, I disagree with that. Well, so. how many nickel tricks can you do? <laughs> well, so that's so that that's my whole. So I started okay. a lecture called "You Are All Terrible," and I really just wanted to start a lecture because there's like magic conventions. And you magic sound like clubs. my mother. Yeah. Okay. So the first slide just says, "You are all terrible." Yeah. And the idea is, any other art form, you start with the idea first. Like, mm -hmm. if you're a painter, I want to paint the sky. Then you go out and buy the paints, or you, then you figure out what you need to do to, to pick that. Mm -hmm. uh, or in comedy, you go, I want to write a joke about this, and then you write the joke. Um, with magic, you go to the magic store, you buy the trick, and then you go, how do I jam this into my act? And so you come up with some bullshit story. And the analogy I use is that it's like kind of like buying an iPhone. And then if you have a different case than somebody else, you still both have iPhones. Yeah. It's not really, you don't really, you're not creating, you're a cover band. Right. Um, and that's most magicians. I would say 95% or more are doing tricks they didn't invent, with scripts they didn't write based on other people's acts. Right. So you're just, you know, it's they're doing a Beatles song and then acting like they're John Lennon. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think it needs to be that way. And so I had been starting that lecture and I kind of felt like I wanted to put my money where my mouth was. And so I started developing a show of magic tricks developed the way I stand up. I wanted to, I wanted to be, there's a lot of magicians who do comedy and I really wanted to people to walk away and feel like they saw a comedian who did magic. Yeah. So like if you took all the trick all the tricks out, you still saw a killer hour of stand up. Yeah. Because every trick is based on my stand up material. Okay. And so that was the approach. So every trick in the act is based on I, like the fuck you card trick. I wrote the script for the trick. I was like, this would be really funny if this is what happens. And then I was like, oh shit! Now I have to figure. I'm not a wizard, so now I have to figure out how to make this trick work. And so then you work backwards and figure out the method for it. As opposed to owning a trick already and then figuring out how to repaint it so it feels like yours. Right. Writing the joke around the trick, you wrote the joke and then how to make the trick exactly. for that joke. And it's how stand-ups write bits. Yeah. Is right. you're like, I want to do a bit about this. And then you, the struggle is like, you know, how do I make this funny? How do I make this engaging? And so is using that method. What's the what's the trick? What what happens? You don't have to tell me. The fuck you card trick. You are all Oh, there's the book. You are all terrible. You wrote um, a book. Well, so it's been a lecture I've been giving for like eight years, uh, right. 10 years. Volume like, nine. So the volume nine, so there is a very famous magic series called the Tarbell uh, Course in Magic. Um, and there's eight of them. And every magician owns all eight. And they all look the same, except each one is a different color. And so if you look at any magician's bookshelf, they have these eight lined up. Yeah. So if you buy my book, you have a ninth one. Okay. So you have one more than all of your friends. Okay, that's great. That's a great idea. Very yeah. creative. But during the pandemic, I was like, if I don't, Turn this into a book now. I'm never gonna, yeah. never gonna become a book, right? Uh, but it's really cool. Um, David Copperfield wrote the final word of the book. Wow, Matt King wrote the uh, you know the David? Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. He's in Vegas, yeah. and he's uh, just a man. She's like the nicest. So what's the trick? What's the fuck you card trick? So the fuck you card trick. The idea was I wanted, I I wanted there to be a. It's hard. There's a lot of card tricks in magic. Yeah, I and mean, we get into why. It, I, I I don't know how often people interact with playing cards outside of maybe they go to a casino or like there's a poker game once in a while, but they're not that common objects. Yeah. So if I was going to do a card trick in the show, I want it to be a little bit of an anti card trick. So right. essentially I have all these jokes about the Bible and Harry Potter, and those are props that are incorporated into the trick. Um, but the meat of it is they name any card. They're holding a book with an envelope inside. They name any card. They open the first envelope. There's another envelope sealed inside. They open that envelope. There's a card. And I'm like, if that's, I mean, you could have named any card and they really can and then when they remove that card, it's just a card that says fuck you on it, which is a big laugh because there's all that tension and yeah. there's a card that says fuck you. But then I take the card and show it to the audience. It's a sticker that peels off and it is the card that they name. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. I just said fuck you instinctually. Right. And you know what? Every time I see a good trick, I want to go, I literally just go fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And it's fun to do a fuck you card. How do you, too. is it math? Is it like, I know how. I, I know how to get here with the trick. I know, I know how these tricks are done. I know how to make that guy's card come up. Now I have to 
put it. Uh, ha, ha, that's hard enough to make that card be where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Right. I would say the analogy to comedy is like when you're coming up with a bit, yeah. there are certain structures and fundamentals that a lot of your bits will slot into, like yeah. rule of three or like the way you do a misdirect. There's sort of structures that you now just do sort of it's unconsciously. Like, it's like. It's like is a great example. Right. You can everybody can use it's like and come up with different jokes. Nobody thinks you've nobody thinks you've stolen a joke if somebody doesn't right. it's like and somebody else doesn't it's like. That's just like a fundamental structure or technique that you can apply to making your idea into a joke. Right. And so the same thing with magic. Those structures are not, it's like the structures could be these different moves that you learn. So you build this base of like, I learned a lot about all sorts of card trick stuff. And then you can then you re remix and reinvent and you and then also on top of using your own brain, I'm very lucky because like Ma all my friends from Magic Camp are still my friends. I can call them if I don't call, know. Help each other and say out. say, like, hey, how do I get this here? How do you get there? Yeah. How do you get the 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 trick there? Yeah. And they can be like, well, try it. You should do this. And oh, that's yeah. now the con the magic community, I would imagine, is nicer to each other than the comic community. It's both, right? Because they, they can be nicer. And there's this thing where like when you arrive in any town, a magician will tell you if you call up another magician and you're like, I need a place to stay, it's like they, they probably will give you that place to stay. Really? Like they're really kind in that way. But when it comes to material, that's that's the thing that I've been railing against for a really long time is the like I'll do I'll do my tricks at a magic convention and then I'll see them in other places they immediately. Them. They take them. And it, I don't know if they mean it maliciously, all of them. Right. It's just what they know is that they see it and then they copy it because they buy their tricks. A good comedian can get away with a lot of things, but losing sleep isn't one of them. We got to be well rested to be funny. That's why I am a big fan of the folks at Ghostbed. They've been making high quality mattresses with premium materials for over 20 years. So you know they'll give you a good night's sleep. Right now, listeners can get 40% off all products site-wide. You can get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories, or get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code YKWD at ghostbed.com slash YKWD for 40% off site-wide. Limited time only. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp, which I need doing this podcast because the people I work with on it drive me batty, especially this time of year, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, and all the other holidays, New Year's. It's a stressful time. Where do I go? What do I do? Who's coming where? What am I getting her? What do they get me? Did they get me some crappy stuff? Did I get that? I mean, it's stressful, anxiety fearful all that stuff comes into play it can be a lot a lot sad anxiety man but you know what you can add something new to your life you can add a little positivity to it you can add a little therapy to it therapy can be the bright spot amidst all the crazy stuff that's about to happen you can look forward to talking to somebody once twice three times as many times as you want a week and letting it out and telling them what's going on. So your family and your loved ones and your friends don't have to feel and deal with the stress and anxiety and sadness. They can just have you. You who you are. The good person. The happy person. You can feel good feelings and love. And all the stuff the holidays are supposed to make you feel. That's what you can feel if you go and check out BetterHelp. Look at man, if you're thinking about starting therapy, try BetterHelp. Just try it. It's entirely online. You don't have to leave your house. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule, which is amazing. It's right there in your phone, on your computer. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime you want at a no additional charge. You like this guy? Great. If you don't, boom. If you want a girl, get a girl. If you can't, just switch it up. I'm telling you, give the best you this season, this holiday season, you can give by going to BetterHelp. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash dude today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash dude. DraftKings Casino is bringing you only the best. Classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots, plus exclusive games you won't find anywhere else. I love it because I can play blackjack without getting freaked out being at a table and all these other people watching. 
And I love roulette. Roulette's awesome. One of the funnest games ever. I always play 17 Black. Everybody knows that. 17 Black, it's the best. Download DraftKings Casino app now and use code WHATDUDE. New players can deposit $5 or more and get a matchup of $500 in casino credits. That's code WHATDUDE. Only at DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gamblers. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 Physically present in the Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opt-in and new customers. Minimum $5 deposit. Maximum match of $500 in casino credits, which requires a one-time playthrough within seven days. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players. Choice for eligibility. Terms and responsibility. Gaming resources. I thought, I thought that was, I think Voss called, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he called. Yeah, he did call. Let's, let's answer this. <laughs> I'm sure he's, because he's, he's not the same guy. Okay. No, I love Rich. He's the sweetest. What did he say to you? <laughs> I think he knows the story. Rich. What's up? Um, I'm doing a podcast with Harrison Greenbaum right now. Wow, how'd you get him? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was uh, headlining uh, uh, a Cirque, Cirque du Soleil show in Vegas for a while. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. Go and, ahead. And he was telling me about the first time you guys met. I don't remember, but well, I'm sure he does because I'm a fucking major act. <laughs> Dude, what, what did he say to you the first time? I was in an autograph line. You were in an autograph line? Uh, at Jones Beach. Jones Beach. Opie and Anthony Show. Virus. Opie and Anthony Show. And uh, I believe he said, what are you smiling at? What did I say? <laughs> what are you smiling at? Oh, is that what I said? I didn't say that. Well, that's not. But what, to be clear, I also that's, said that's not what this queer is saying. <laughs> I also said I love you and I think you're amazing. Yes. <laughs> oh well, did I sign? You did sign. All right. So what the fuck? <laughs> well, I told him. That I don't think I said that, but go ahead. Well, I've saying I said that we've all changed. That was a long time ago in a different time, and you're yeah, so. you're you're a nicer person now. You're a more well, kind he, person. Yeah, I mean, back then, you were allowed to say it. I would now. I would say, "Fuck off, <laughs> <laughs> fuck off, <laughs> say, say fuck it. off, sinner." <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. First of all, Harrison knows I'm nice. Whenever I saw him in Vegas, I was always a total sweetheart. Nice. What's that? I said, you, I, I love you. That's, I said, I, yeah. the, 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 uh, the sort of, uh, before I said the story, I, I made a, I wanted to be very clear that I think you're amazing. He hung up. <laughs> There's nobody better. Uh, There's nobody better. So you went out there and you did this, this, you, you're doing stand up, you're doing magic, you're doing, oh, you're getting paid good money? Yeah. It's great money. Yeah. Okay. So you're making great money. You got a residency for a year, year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. You got to do this thing. How, most guys would ride now. That's Voss's dream, by the way. <laughs> if he wants it, he could have it. Not you, magic, <laughs> but he wanted. He wants. Would he do the dance? He wants the residency. He wants to go to Vegas, have a hotel, do his show like a Vinny Favorito type thing, where he goes out and trashes <laughs> the crowd and Don Rickles, and he can golf during the day, do his dumb shows at night. You know what I mean? That's his dream gig. Why would you give that up? Why would you walk away from that? Uh, I did 650 shows, and I felt like I'd reached uh, a point where I, I wanted to really just focus on my own stuff. And that was that was the whole thing was, like, getting out specials and albums and all that kind of stuff. Ten shows a week was a physical drain. Yeah. I left very little time for the, all the creative stuff that I wanted to be doing. Uh, did you have a house out there? House with a pool, the whole thing. And you were renting it or buying it? You renting, bought it. Renting it. You rented it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you, you're back here? Yeah, so I, I've been looking at apartments all this week. So hopefully we're moved back in the city by mid-November. And you got a lot of money saved up? I say I tried to save as much as I could while I was out there. So that, that's going to be helpful for sure. Okay, so now you're coming back here. What's your plan? The plan is I finally get to... So like I that show that I, I've been developing, um, it's Harrison Greenbaum, What Just Happened, that I want to tape as a special and get it out there. Because mm -hmm. the other thing is comedians 
put their hour out, burn it down, do a new hour. Yeah. A lot of magicians just do the same act till they die. Sure. And I definitely want, I want to avoid that as much as possible. So I want to get this whole show out. I've been working on it for, at this point, probably 15 years. Um, so get that out there. Let people see it. I think it's a cool, I think it's a blend of comedy magic that hasn't really been out there. Um, definitely not in a long time. Um, and then start working on the second show. You know, my friend Jack Vaughn has a comedy. Like I spoke show. to Jack. I've spoken to Jack. Yeah, yeah I, to I told him about you. you uh, well, he's got a show he does. Yes. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And? Well, see, I know I know he's trying to pitch it and all that. Okay, yeah, stuff. yeah. He loves, he's into magic. I, I, I think magic is like comedy or wrestling. There's like, we get in it. And then we fall out of it. We go to something else. <laughs> and I think then I think magic's gonna have a big comeback because it was big for a minute. It gets big every like ten years. M like we get fascinated with it again. Yeah. I mean, the challenge is that thing of like ninety five percent of magicians are doing each other's shit. Yeah. And so it's imagine if you went to the comedy club and then after you've been you know you've seen a headliner in a room yeah. and then by the third headliner you're like these these tricks are repeating. Yeah. And so that that can kill it. So it's it's it's. I'm trying to. That's what's it. happening in comedy now. <laughs> well, it. crowd work, all the tricks behind crowd work, and then everybody's putting every crowd work bit out imaginable. Yeah, it loses a little bit of the magic. Yeah, I think so. And you can tell who's natural at it and who's not. Right. You I've can, seen bad crowd work clips online. It yeah. blows my. mind. You don't have to post it. That is forcing you to post. You you bombing with crowd work. It's bad. And when you can see them just forcing something. Ugh. You know. I mean, We're just good. asking too many questions. You could also yeah. edit it out. Where are you from? What do you do? What's your name? What's your mother's name? What's your maiden name? What does she do for work? Yeah, the full uh, job I'm, interview. I'm enough, dude. Fucking yeah. shut up. Uh, but yeah, because I remember when uh, Chris Angel. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris Angel did you, threaten to sue me. You're laughing for some reason. I, but Chris Angel, he was the one who kind of brought magic back, his show. His little thing that he was mind filming. Mind freak? Mind freak. He I brought, I mean, dude, that was, well, it, it brought it back into the mainstream again because he, he started doing magic in a way that wasn't done. Up until him, it was always David, uh, some dude in a suit with a dumb broad next to him. Well, you're missing, so you had Doug Henning. Doug who Henning. Was dressed, you know, dressed like a hippie in a time when hippies were cool. Like, okay. Right? Yeah. In the 70s. Sure. And then Copperfield comes along, reinvents magic, yeah. makes it theatrical. He has a background also where he loves musical theater, and yeah. so you can see that, and it's he's telling a story. Yeah, he he. So the told, art form goes from. Yeah. I mean, a, one of the biggest leaps in, of, of an art form in, when one person right revolutionizes the whole art form. Yeah. Still, still probably the goat, right? Like he's just the greatest. Copperfield was awesome because it was this event. Yeah. He made an event that you're staying home to watch. And he inspired your imagination. Like, he's going to make the Statue of Liberty disappear? That's insane. Yeah, when he made the Hawaii volcano. All that stuff. It's unbelievable. Yeah, he, Walking through the Great Wall of China. It was an event. Yeah, He made this yeah. big thing that we were like, oh, I, we got to watch this tonight. Yeah. yeah. And then the next one I would say before Chris, though. Penn and Teller. Is, well, and Penn and Teller also, they're doing this great, like, the Magic's Bad Boys, Deconstructing Magic. Sure. Um, they're also revolutionizing the art form in a totally different and interesting yeah. way. Yeah. But like David Blaine comes along and does street magic where he's flipping the camera around. So you're seeing the audience's reaction. Yeah, but David Blaine was the faces of death of magic. You know I what I mean? So. Where you, you couldn't, like you saw this stuff, you heard this guy. Yeah. You couldn't, he was really not on TV, TV. It was, was like- ABC. It was out there. Yeah, but then, but his little levitation shit, you had a, you know, it was on- but like you had to go find it somewhere. You know what I mean? Well, I think the, the he didn't have like a regular show. The, he came on, did his thing. But when it was like off, specials. Yeah, he do a special, and he was great. But it was, it was. I, I hear you. I hear I think, you. Too. I think because Chris comes kind of. Chris's specials are after that. Yeah, but Blaine would do. I love Blaine. I think he's great. But he would do stuff like I'm gonna stick a needle through my face, <laughs> and he would just stick a needle through his face, and you're like, well, he's interesting. That's not magic. That's a needle through your face. Right. But that's a throwback to Houdini. I want to see your head get lopped off. Right. And then I want you to see tightrope between buildings. Like, yeah. Chris, I think, was a mix between Copperfield, traditional magic, and what David was doing, where it was kind of edgy, this cool dude, long hair, doing crazy shit. Yeah, I mean, he so, had that weird, like, because it wasn't, it was that hard, it was like that, like, uh, heavy metal band magician. What is that? Yeah, like that's the vibe. 
Yeah, he's he's uh, he's he's the Dane Cook of magic. <laughs> that's a very apt description. <laughs> I think that's probably the way to go. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. I mean, he shouldn't be shirtless anymore. By the way, I'm sorry, brother. You're in better shape than me. I know it. I'm a fan, <laughs> but you look like a brujuto. <laughs> Um, and he he's suing you. Well, he threatened to sue me. Why? Um, so he I, he opened up. Well, every year I do this sort of like you know how like Kindler would do like the State of the Comedy Union. Yeah, I thought it'd be really fun to do sort of like a State of the Magic Union. So I would do this roast. Yeah. Um, I do a roast of magic. Yeah. Uh, and I would hit everybody. Sure. Um, so I got up to this roast in uh, it would have been 20, 2021. Yeah, 2021. Um, because oh, I guess I guess Cirque started 2022, and now we're in 2023. So yeah. that oh yeah. So the end of 2021, I'm doing it as a stream, like virtual still, and I'm like, how do I end the roast? And I'm hitting every major magician, and uh, Chris Angel opened up a restaurant called Chris Angel's Kablip, and the Kablip stands for Chris Angel's Breakfast, Lunch, and Pizza. So it's Chris Angel's Chris Angel's Breakfast, Lunch, and Pizza. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Exactly. <laughs> it's stupid it's a restaurant in the middle of the desert okay first of all people around him hate him a lot of people they know his closest people hate him yeah like people the fact that if i said my mama to my wife i call her mama it's an italian thing okay mama i'm gonna open up a breakfast lunch or breakfast called kablip bobby's kablip she'd be like no you're not <laughs> right exactly i can't leave the house with blue shirt and blue pants you understand me <laughs> he opened kablip he opened. Oh God! And there it has a. There's a champagne table at this diner. Uh, the handicap uno, spots. Uno momento. If I hear another fucking beep sound in my headphones, <laughs> I'm gonna break your fingers, Max. That's that's Danny. I, no, but Max, I'm putting it on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's leadership. <laughs> you control Danny, <laughs> or I fucking take a finger, like the yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> I got. It. So he. Uh, and there's and the, the uh, there's if you look at the Google Maps of it, there's two handicap spots, and then closer to the door is his private spot. Like that, this is the Wait this is the real I, menu, right? This is a menu. This is the real one. Yeah, this is the real menu. Okay, tell me what's on the first one. He has a what does it say, Danny? No, Danny will read it. <laughs> read it. It's just, it's just like breakfast, lunch. Read it. <laughs> the whole menu? No, just some of them. You uh, fucking two eggs any shitty. Style. Stop the show with breaks. Two eggs any style. <laughs> so it's not magic counts. names. It's <laughs> no. just regular shit. Mozzarella sticks. Uh, there's some sandwich wraps and rock and roll. You can order rock and roll. <laughs> How do you get rock and roll? Sandwiches, wraps, and rock and roll. Okay, served so with a big pickle. This is in the middle of nowhere. In the middle, you have to, you get to Las Vegas. There's already a desert in the middle of nowhere and then drive another hour into nowhere. Really? And, wow. So this, I, so I, at the end of my roast, Can, I is go, there is there photos of it? Oh yeah. Can I see photos of it, Danny? Yes. That would be good, right? Danny? Yeah. <laughs> as the guy who's supposed to do the computer quicker? <laughs> One, two, three, four. Almost. We're five, almost there. Six, seven, eight. Nine. It would be faster 10, to drive 11, to the blip. 12, 13, 14. There it is. What does it say? So it's Chris Angel's, Chris Angel's Breakfast, Lunch, and Pizza. There's the logo. Breakfast, Lunch, and Pizza. Kablip. It's called Kablip. It's called Kablip. Why yeah. would he call it Kablip? It's great, it's Who's great that? Question. Oh, they've actually updated their website. Oh, is that his That's kids? new, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He puts his kids in there. Wow. He added some stuff to it. Um, uh, okay. So that's in the middle of nowhere. So I make I make some pizza. roast jokes pizza. about this restaurant. Go to the pizza. Go back to the pizza. <laughs> I want to see the pizza. I'm fucking starving. Well, Chris is Chris is Greek, so you know he knows a lot about pizza. Okay. <laughs> Greek pizza is pretty good. That's. <laughs> I I like Greek pizza is a thing. That's actually uh, Chicago pizza. But go ahead. I right, fuck it. Sure. All right, so so you, I, I do some roast jokes about it, and then they go, you know, the website is eatblip.com or kablip.com. It's not kabliprestaurant.com, a fact that I know because I bought kabliprestaurant.com. You bought it. I bought it, and I uploaded a parody. So it looks exactly like that menu, but it's very clearly a parody of that menu. Is that it? And there's kabliprestaurant.com. So it looks pretty close, but it's clearly a parody. Right. I have to, I'm legally obligated to say. And <laughs> what does it say? It's pronounced Why? Yeah, why, question mark, exclamation point, question mark. 
Oh, so read some of the stuff. Is it, read some of the stuff. A uh, cinnamon's toast crunch, named after a stripper Chris banged once <laughs> in the '90s. It's just regular cereal, but served with human breast milk. Can <laughs> substitute Special K, also a stripper, and served with drugs or Pop Tarts. A male stripper with a dad bod and a sour attitude. <laughs> read some more. Uh, we got uh, signature garlic knots. Regular garlic knots, but Chris has signed each one in Sharpie. We told him it wasn't sanitary, but it did it anyway. You can get six for $78 or 666 That's $787, you fat fuck. <laughs> you call him a fat fuck. Little Chris's salad <sighs> is, uh, is for kids. It's just pancakes. <laughs> and the flavors of ices include uh, dyed black hair and beige. <sighs> so very clearly. I heard uh, it's a wig. It, could, it very well could be. That means yes, that you know, but you can't because it's it's a magician's secret code. I don't know if that's a magician's secret code. <laughs> All right, scroll up. I want to read. Why is he down there? What is he this doing? part's very funny? All right, what is read? Right. Reserve the magic room or love table for that special occasion, such as divorce, post funeral mourning, or getting a not guilty verdict in a murder trial. Why did he kill somebody? No, no, that was just the oh. only times I could think of. It would be oh. even worth. Oh, okay, trying to celebrate. <laughs> What else you got? My Read favorite, something. What my else? favorite part yeah. is uh, the disclaimer where it goes, consuming raw food at this restaurant has the same side effects as attending a Chris Angel live performance, dizziness, confusion, nausea, vomiting, and a weird desire to buy a black eyeliner for some reason. <laughs> Please be advised that food prepared in this restaurant may contain nuts. Advise your server uh, if you do not want Chris Angel to put his testicles in or near your food because he will do that if you do not ask. Fair warning. Just because something is a salad doesn't mean it's healthy. It's just because it's a magic show is playing in the Las Vegas Strip doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I uploaded this. You made this all. I made this all. And you and this was for the roast. This was for the roast. Uh, and the, I, I worked for, I wrote for mag magazine for a while. So like coming up with like a menu parody is like in my blood. Like right. this is my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, four days later, I got a cease and desist. Oh, really? And I was like, oh, no. And the problem with the cease and desist is that even if you know you would win, like First Amendment, there's so many laws about parody and comedy that would protect this very like clear exercise of free speech and comedy. Sure. Like very clear. You go to court though, it's gonna still cost you 20 or 30 grand and yeah. like years of your life even to win it. Yeah. And so you go, is it worth it to keep that website up? Um, so I, I talked to lawyers. I eventually put the cease and desist on my social media. A bunch of lawyers were like, oh, we, we will do this for free. Really? <laughs> they, you, want, you want to go up against Chris Angel? Pro bono. <laughs> Really, really? And so I got a guy from Public Citizen to represent me, and he wrote an amazing uh, cease and desist. He put a lot of magic puns in it. He asked me if that was okay. And I said, go for it. So there's what? things like, this is the cease and desist. Okay, read it. Um, which is all just crazy stuff. Um, but my lawyer responded to the points. It was like, even Houdini couldn't wriggle out of the legal restraints. Like that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I sent that back. No response, of course. Uh, to this day, which is good. Oh, really? Um, I left the website up. And by the way, on the bottom of that thing you saw, I've been promoting, I've always promoted uh, his children's charity. His child had cancer and he has a, child, yeah. a charity for yeah, cancer. Yeah, I know. It makes the Johnny sense. Christopher Charitable Foundation. Sure. Which is amazing. Highly recommend you donate to it. Right. I donated to it. They sent the money back. They, oh, they didn't take your money. They didn't take my money. But I think if other wow. people donate to it, they will keep it. So, and it's a good cause. It is a good charity. Uh, it all goes like... So he hates you. I think he might. No, he <laughs> hates you. Well, he didn't take cancer kid money. He didn't take cancer kid money. And then, <laughs> that, wow. that was in J January, Fe December, January. Uh, he would rather let some poor kid die <laughs> of cancer, of cancer than accept, my than accept money. your yeah. fucking money. That's yeah. how much he hates you. Yeah. There was a kid going, please, Chris. <laughs> and he was like, and they had the money, and he was like, you need give another this, infusion. Give it's like, not going to happen. Wow. Uh, no, but the charity does do a lot of good work. But, okay. um, a couple of months later, um, amazing Jonathan. Were you afraid that yeah. he was just going to appear in your living room? I people were nervous for my safety. When no, like was in Vegas. all he's just going to see smoke and a fucking pigeon, <laughs> and he's like, "I heard you were making fun of me." There was a part of me. It would require probably CGI and editing for him to do that. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but there, amazing Jonathan passed away, and they asked me to speak at his memorial, and I was like hugely honored. He was a huge influence. Yeah, finally, she's a guy supposed to die years ago. Right, exactly. But it, two, and two documentaries. somehow still shocking, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> it's one of those things where even if you're prepared for it, you're still somehow not prepared for it. Yeah. And then they go, Chris would like to speak too, but if he finds out you're speaking, he's not going to do it. So do you mind? Hi You'll love this. Would you mind hiding in the closet? <laughs> and I'm like, that's my thing. <laughs> and uh, I did that for you. And 
<laughs> so I hid. I hid in a closet until Chris was done with his speech. And then I walked up and roasted Chris to his face. No. And so that was that, that was is, a crazy that, moment. Um, well, it's, it's amazing, Jonathan. So he would I, love it. Everybody was roasting each other. I got right. hide in the face during the speech. Everybody got pranked. So that was the vibe of this thing. It was, yeah. it was an incredible celebration. Was he them. laughing, Chris? No, he was the only one not laughing. Everybody else really? was in tears. Well, was he just dark Chris and sullen? bombed his... He was trying to do jokes, and they weren't working, and nobody was really... He was just bombing. And he just was like, oh, tough crowd. And it's like, yeah, it's a fucking memorial for our dead friend. But right. Of course, it's a tough fucking crowd. <laughs> yeah. And then I got up there, and my first joke was... You know, it's just an honor to be in front of, you know, it's a tribute to Amazing Jonathan that he'd be celebrated by so many incredible magicians and Chris Angel. <laughs> That's funny. Big laugh. And then yeah. I leaned in. I was like, see, Chris, it's not the crowd. Oh, my God. That was a huge. And then at that point, it was just like, boom, 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 boom. boom. And he was not laughing. No. So you had to get off. But here's and the then, thing. And then, yeah? that's February, May. Now I'm headlining a Las Vegas show, and my face is on all these billboards staring him down. Wow. So it, it was. And his yeah. show's getting, ta- like, panned, right? He had two shows, actually. He had his show. It was at the Luxor. At the Luxor, uh, when it was a Cirque show. Oh, and yeah. then it became Mind Freak, and then it moved to Planet Hollywood, and then he tried this other show called A Mystica. So he's not doing a show right now. He is. He had. He had for, for a brief moment, he had two shows. Where is he at now? Planet Hollywood. And oh, Planet Hollywood was, is a the end of this. That's when you. I mean, about he, off the you strip. Know, they got his show. They got uh, a Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> People love a Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> Woof. So that's. Oof. <laughs> Oof. I'd rather be at the Plaza. <laughs> Well, and then the, here's the other man. I brought a, I brought a prop just because I I figured we might talk about this story. But this yeah. is the book. You saw a picture of the book. Yeah. And um, the inside of the dust jacket. I don't think I've actually revealed it on anything. Is the menu? Get your face out of here! <laughs> oh my god! I can, I want a book. Can I have a book? Yeah, you can have it for sure. That is great. So inside of every uh, copy of you, book, I mean, do you hate do. this guy? <laughs> no, I just, I just really think comedians should be able to parody people without the fear of legal reprisal for exercising their Chris, First Amendment rights. Chris Angel, believe. Yeah, and those are those are that's the real poster. Those are the two real posters. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> if you look, if you look at his posters, they turn him into a penis. Dude, it says it's small. Small ice cream for children's and pussies. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this menu. <laughs> extra large, four scoops. Not the only thing Chris Angel promises extra large. That's actually just the small. <laughs> wow. Uh, Stardust. Did we mention this made uh, is made at Chris Angel's old warehouse? That's a true fact. What is? So in the me- the real menu, um, he, the warehouses he makes them by like he makes the the ices, but the the location where he makes the ices is also where he stores his illusion. It's just a warehouse. He makes as what? Far as I he know. makes ice. He makes ices. What's ice for the restaurant? Like, I, like uh, Italian ices. He makes them at his warehouse. This is yes. Now he's a gazillionaire <laughs> though, right? I don't know. He's got to be. He had the show for years. He had a giant warehouse sale. He sold a lot of his illusions. Oh really? Know. He sold some know. shit. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And then he lives. Have you seen his house? He calls it Serenity. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> yeah, you can't call your house the opposite of what it makes you feel. I call my house cunt because <laughs> I'm usually a cunt when I'm at it. Oh, I thought you uh, called it because I've never been inside it. Nice. There we go. That's for you. <laughs> That's your house. <laughs> Chris Angel's net worth, $50 million. That's a lot of money. Yeah, but you know what? My net worth is like $5 million on these websites. These uh, websites are, what is uh, Bobby Kelly's? 300000 Oh, God. Well, there was one of these websites where you could Mine's 300000 and it makes me sad. There's Yours no, has got to be more. It's not. On this website. These cocksuckers won't update it. Really? Yeah, go to, go one to, of those websites allows users to I mean, we were it. literally just watching, and they took it off. <laughs> he is a numbskull. I, I probably fucked Can you get my, my net worth, please? So you made $5 million on there. No. I will. So what happened was one of the websites back in the day had a slider that allowed you to submit how much you thought they were worth. Oh. And it went from $0 to like $10 billion. Okay. So I put $10 billion, and that yeah. gets averaged in. 300000 Really? I mean, it's not true, but yes. Usually, like, how, what's Rich Voss? There's no way he's more than me. Let's see. <laughs> Doug Bell is up there? <laughs> how much is Doug Bell? Click on Doug Bell. 
I, Which is worth 400000 Fuck it. That's Bonnie's money. Wow. <laughs> Go to Doug Bell, please. Click on that. Oh, my God. He's <laughs> <laughs> Five thousand. Five thousand dollars. What God is this website? This is just a rote. Go on a different celebrity net worth website. I don't think there is. is there oh, there's a million of them. All if right, you just go. type in Bobby Kelly net worth into Google, you're going to get. I think it's going to go lower. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you Google it, they chop off a hundred thousand. So, so you get it. I mean, this guy. You, you're mad at him for not being able to take a joke. You're mad at him for trying to sue you. And, well, to be, and, but but don't 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 magicians not like him? He, he's not popular. <laughs> Why? He's not. He has. I don't think he's been very nice to many people. Really? Yeah. That's uh, I my know, experience. I know is, some comics who have had the same experience. Yeah, and most yeah. magicians have been unbelievably nice. Like most comedians. I mean, yeah. like, uh, yeah. It's 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 weird. Um, so but you, like in the roast too. Like I've roasted every magician in my roast, and I remember Blaine, for example, was at one of my roasts yeah. and came up to me and he goes, "I'm mad at you," and I was like, "Really?" He goes, "You could have gone harder." I was like, right. "That's the correct response to a yeah. roast." David Blaine is cool though, right? And he he's friends with comics. <laughs> yeah. And Chris and Angel too is super. Chris cool. Angel takes himself too serious. You think maybe? I wonder if he's just Take, constantly yeah. judging himself against other people that have done better and that. Well, it must be a him. fall too because he's so he was so big. He has his he show was, at the yeah. Luxor. He's got the O thing. It's so big. He's got his TV show that is a hit. It was a hit. It yeah, was and a I remember hit. Seeing, he had a show at the. Uh, when the Hard Rock was still the like WWF restaurant, yeah, it was the wrestling theme restaurant in Times Square. He had a show in the basement. Yeah. I saw that when I was like a teenager, and I remember seeing some really cool stuff in there. Right, and then he all beca he becomes the biggest magician in the world. At one point, yeah, he was the second. big one for a hot yeah. second. And Although, now, I think in the first season, because he was married to this lady for a long time, and in the first season, I remember she popped up on screen. It just said Chris Angel's friend. Really, and I was like, oh no. This is gonna. This is not a well, good sign for the marriage if she's just listed as friend. Well, because he's he's got that image, right? That image of uh, you know a player. He's got that. St I know his stupid spinning ball in Serenity, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, his house has a lot of crucifixes. Yeah, man. He's. I mean, it sucks to have to live like Count Dracula, <laughs> right? He yeah. really. He really has to have. He has capes and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very and he's like Blaine and Copperfield, Houdini, all Jews. Yeah. So he's the outlier there. Yeah, you're a Jew. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's not a Jew. He's a, a what Jew. Is, he's a Greek, right? All the good magicians. What are is he Jews. Greek or Italian? Jesus? No. It's a good Jew. Chris Jewish. Angel. Greek. Greek. He's Greek. Yeah, Greek. Sarantakos. His name is Christopher Sarantakos. Sarantakos. And he's from New York, right? He's from Long Island. Long Island. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, look, I I liked him. I've always liked his show. It started to get really like, dude, come on, dude. Well, the crazy thing is how many Jesus. episodes that he had to produce. Like it, it's not easy to develop your own original trick. Like it's taken me years for each trick, and that show probably ate through three or four tricks an episode, and yeah. he did seventy episodes. Yeah, like at a certain point, you're but just he had like to, running to a magic shop with a credit card, going like, "Hand me a coloring book," or like, yeah. "Hand me whatever you." Well, he had to get have. people to help him. He had teams, and then uh, he went through a lot of teams because they didn't like him. I mean, like, I'm, I'm very good friends with uh, Carbonero, who, my, who did the Carbonero effect, and he was a magic camper. And a lot of his team came from magic camp, and they stuck with him, I mean, the whole time. Like, that, that's a good example of somebody treating their people really well and, like, right. those people doing an incredible job. I mean, they're doing 17, 18-hour days, coming up with tricks, and he was really important to Michael that it was all original stuff. Yeah. And so it's, but seeing it from that, that close, you know, and talking to Michael about it, he worked his ass off. It's hard yeah. to keep coming up with new tricks. So you had Danny, my, my producer, Danny in the class. Now, when you first met him, did you think it was like a, like a, um, you know, like some type of autistic kid who got a scholarship or some type of dream thing? Like this kid's going to die soon. So, <laughs> Somebody got him this camp. No, it's magic camp. So he was one of the most normal. Oh, really? <laughs> I forgot. He stood out as unbelievably social. Was he good? <laughs> he was good. Yeah. No. And he was funny. You had like you, were, Danny. Your acts were always comedy based, right? Yeah, I did the yeah. the the Jared from Subway pedophile act. I do remember. What that. What was that? You look. You looked like Jared from Subway. Yeah. So he, he, did an he act. looks like Jared from Subway and the kids he fucked. <laughs> <laughs> He did a whole act as Jared from Subway. And and he won't why won't why Danny, why are you so against magic now? Um well first of all, I haven't 
done a trick in years, so I don't want to do one for the first time on the podcast and be terrible. I kill, but I, why wouldn't you just rehearse it for a week or so and then do it? And then number two, when I first started comedy in Florida... You I, took I, an I, oath? <laughs> 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 Fucking asshole. What? <laughs> I don't. I, I would do a trick here and there, and then people would judge me and just get labeled. Or want people would want me to do magic at a show, and I and I I don't really like it anymore. I guarantee you, nobody's gonna be knocking at your door. Please do more tricks. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're gonna be like, please just stick to jokes and make them better. <laughs> I remember when you were just getting started, like you had you had graduated and you started getting into doing stand up, and you would send me a tape after like every show. Oh, that's so embarrassing. I, no, but it was it was. You still have those. <laughs> I must bury it deep in my Facebook. No. You have unless, them. You, unless they were YouTube links that Danny has deactivated. I am going to delete those tonight. <laughs> can, you, can you go on your Facebook right now? Is there any way you could find? Let's see. Let's see. Before he deletes them. <laughs> well, there's but a no, race. Danny, I, truly, please, truly, I'm please. I'm very proud of how Before, far you've come. Listen, just put his name in, search it, and please find it. If you find this That's right bad. now, this will be the best trick you've ever done. <laughs> How many years back do we have to go? I don't know, but please. I'm at 2016. Oh, please find it. Please find one. Just type his name in, his messages on Facebook. Type Danny's name in. Ah, uh, you sent him to pri private already. Oh. They, uh, they, I think he's already deleted the... Are you, Danny, don't you fucking dare. <laughs> Danny, stop his I keyboard. I think he's beating me. <laughs> Dude, stop his keyboard. Oh, uh, shit. It's Every not... single one. If the owner of the video has granted you access, please sign in. Did you fucking delete them? Not now. I didn't just do it right now. I probably have in the past. Are they all? I mean, that's pretty good though. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> oh, here's something. Oh no, is it a thumb picture? Oh, oh my, Danny, <laughs> you look. Oh my, oh, you. Oh no. Wow. And by the way, I, Danny, if you want to put up any old pictures of me, the I'm magic. Sure mine were oh, even worse yeah. than these. Oh. The magic of Danny Braff. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you look, dude. Wow. The magic. There, there's a picture of me where I was trying to do holding up a fake, like a pulling off my thumb, but I got a fake thumb, and in the picture it looked like I was holding up a very small penis. <laughs> and I could pull up this picture if you give me a second. It's really great. Oh, please. Is this it right here? I think I found No, this is not it. This is, can I scroll through this? Yeah. This is all, this is all Danny Brath. Oh, shit. Here's something. That's me just writing some advice, I think. Yeah. This is you, Buddha Audio. No. Oh, here's something. Improv, I think they're all down, Dan. I think are fine. <laughs> improv coin purse. Oh God, here it is. They're all taken down, Danny. <laughs> it's on. It's on YouTube. You know that, right? I think I probably already took them down. Nope. <laughs> Danny, if you don't fucking release these, oh, here's one. I have some really old promo shots that are unbelievably embarrassing. Oh my God, he took. Do them. you want to pull up? I can pull up my worst one. You pull up your worst one. We'll come. Oh, my worst one was if you. There's this one shot where it's like I have my hand, my head in my hands, oh. and it's because I needed headshots. I just moved. I just graduated college, uh -huh. moved to New York, and I, I thought I need headshots. And I went on Craigslist, and a guy named Angel says I can take pictures of you in my apartment. Angel. And I fucking went, and I wasn't <laughs> murdered, or or sexually assaulted in any fashion. So you were like, God damn it. And it, <laughs> <laughs> shit! Oh, I got these headshots. Uh, but yeah, it's me with like with a sweater and like I just have hope and dreams on my face. <laughs> that is pretty brutal. And my my taglines through the years, I was magic with style. I'm gonna throw up. Magic for kids, by kids, because I was a, I was young. <laughs> and I was doing like bar mitzvahs when I was bar mitzvah age. So magic. I mean, oh, okay, back to Chris Angel thing. There, this thing is still going on. Are you still hate each other? I did. You, did did you ever hear from him again? I've never heard from him again. After the, the, the wake of Jonathan. Nothing. I tried Nothing. to say hi to him afterwards, and he ran away. He ran, what do you mean I ran away? I have a video. Away. He kind of ran a little bit. You, I was approaching him, and then he kind of bolted. He just took off. He wants yeah. nothing to do with you. No. Wow. And I, the thing is, like, the charity work he's doing is fantastic. Right. Can't take away from that. Sure, yeah. He's really raising a ton of money for kids with cancer. Like, and his, show, his show now in Vegas is what? Uh, it's his Mind Freak show. Is my freak show, and that's a plan, and, and and it's not good. I mean, my whole thing in my book is about coming up with your own shit. And his stuff is tricks he bought from other people, and did it, made it his own, but it's I not mean, his trick. I, yeah, the first question I would ask if I had him on the other side of the mic would be, you know, were all the tricks? You, there is a way you can buy other people's tricks. There are ways where you can have people help you, mm -hmm. and there's then there's also just like stealing tricks. Oh, you have to buy the trick. I mean, you can you can hire a team just like Letterman can hire writers yeah. Yeah. to write comedy for you. Okay, yeah. Some of the big guys can hire a team to help them. Like, yeah, that's um, what he did. I thought. I mean, the 
he at the very beginning when he was doing his wrestling show, I think he was coming up with like kind of interesting ideas. Mm -hmm. um, but there are so many shows on this trip. Like Copperfield's, I mean, is he still on the strip? Copperfield's still on the strip. Where he's Mirage? Doing insane stuff. He's at MGM Grand. What like give 15 me fifteen shows a week? He does fifteen shows a week. Cop David Dave. He's at the MGM the hardest, Grand. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. He's and what is he doing that's amazing? Um, I guess I'm not spoiling it because it's in the poster, but like he makes a a spacecraft appear. I think. Danny, oh, oh my, my god. god. Yeah. Is that your cock? Bring that back up. I'm, Bring it up. I'm, I'm, oh, you leave right now. Make a choice. <laughs> Make a choice. You bring that back up, little Danny Braff, or you leave. Yes. Make it big. That looks like an ad for a moil. Dude, is that your penis? <laughs> Why green and orange? Make that big. Let me... Danny, can I say something? You have the biggest fake thumb I've ever seen. <laughs> why is it... Why... Okay, so you're supposed to take your thumb off, right? Yeah, and then I posted on Facebook, and Michael Carbonaro was the first one to comment, uh, maybe you should take that down. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. That's Magic Camp Family looking out for Magic Camp Family. I mean, I think the idea is strong because everybody does that, like, you know, the, the thumb trick. Yeah. And so this is him being like, I can do it for real. So I think the idea is good. Yeah, but... The problem is it does look like a penis. It looks like a huge penis. It That's looks where the like idea goes awry, is the penis part. But yeah, it looks up like until a, that part, it was a great But idea. it looks like a Muslim penis, not a <laughs> Jewish penis. And look at Danny's face, man. Jesus Christ. And also in He looks Dan like a young girl transitioning into a, a young Jewish in, boy. In Danny's defense, most magic promo shots look this awkward or worse. Wow, look at your eyebrows. Surprise. If you just Google Google magician promo shots, I'm sure they all are this or <laughs> Wow, that's scarier. Cool. That's terrible. There's an Instagram page just dedicated to it. I, well, I yeah. They may have gotten rid of it, but it was a thing. So you 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 quit this show. You're done. I'm done with this. Forever. Show. I've reached the end of my term, yeah. Are you, doesn't that bum you? I mean, you had a gig. You had your thing. You had no, money coming. I'm, You're done. I could not be more excited. Really? So it was a really Were fun they show mad? to be a part of. No, no, it was super amicable. What'd they say? Could you come back if you wanted to? P possibly. Um, I'm not sure. Um, what is this? Oh. <laughs> That was the album I put out during the pandemic. I uh, I definitely had Live Madison Square Garden and did a very elaborate illusion show. And I figured the best way to preserve that show for all time and for yeah. people to be able to enjoy it was audio only. Because what better way to enjoy a very visual magic show? Can I see some of this? You can hear some of it. <laughs> okay, let me, <laughs> let me hear it. Can I hear it? All right, put your headphones on. Guide me through this. Am I? Am I no, doing? No. Who do? How about let's have him you can do play the variety clip. What? We can play a variety a clip from it. I'm sure. What did you? What do you want to do, Danny? I was gonna say he should do a audio. He should do a magic trick, of audio just for the listeners. Do a trick for you, uh, so you can see it, but the, the listeners can't. So they can all right, so the they'll be on my face. You do the trick, okay. and I'll see them. And I think people will realize after this how good a medium just sound is for sure. magic. Let's do this. So I'm holding a box. You can see the box very clearly. I can see the box right there. Right? And you we'll can see hold it above and below. Quick. I can see it below. Right? And it's yeah. an empty box. Sure, it's an empty box. And it's about, I would say, I don't know, how big would you say? I would say it's about a foot, two feet. Yeah, it's like, uh, like a foot or a foot and a half. All right, so I'm going to close the box. Okay, so you're telling nothing in the box. There's nothing no in the box. No mirrors, no trap doors. Yeah. Nothing. nothing no, there's no hidden assistants. No. All right, so now yeah, I Unless you had a... You can't have an assistant. <laughs> I would have saw them come up. Exactly. So, okay, yeah. so it's got just a box. box. Yeah, it's like an empty it. box. It's an empty box. I want you to just th think of an animal that would fit in that box. It doesn't have to fill the whole box. It could be a very small animal. Okay. Or it could be an animal that would really be a tight squeeze in the box. But just think of an animal that would fit in that box. Okay, got it. You got it? Yeah. All right, what is that animal? It's a baby elephant. A baby elephant. That's yeah. going to be a tight squeeze for that box. You said a tight squeeze. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Check it out. What the f Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then I'm going to put it back. I'm going to put it back. Put it back. Put it back. What the f Yeah. Are insane. you shitting me? Say it. Ready? And now it's gone. I was pretty I mean I feel like the, I feel like everybody who's listening could understand how Holy difficult shit. trick that is. My god, dude, that's crazy. Insane. And that you have a special that does this. That's just a, a taste of the kind of magic that you can get on that album only. Oh, my God. Well, that's a crazy... Was that an illusion or a trick? I think it's a little bit of both. 
Uh, I would I would describe it as a miracle. Your whole that, well, <laughs> I would describe your marriage as that. <laughs> um, dude, I mean you. I mean there is you're a fight. You're a very interesting dude, man. And um, you've mastered two careers, your comedy and magic, which is pretty wild to me. I think it's you know, and I do commend Joe Russell who did magic, and Danny who did magic, and now they're doing stand up. But they still have that other skill set that they spent hours, oh, yeah. hours perfecting, which is nuts. What you have to do to become do good tricks is nuts, you know. I think Teller has a quote about sometimes the secret to magic is just the magician is willing to spend way more time or and or effort than any human being could possibly want to spend to do something that yeah. silly. So I mean, I uh, you got That's the a book. Paraphrase. You got a book which uh, yeah, I you are all terrible. Of, which you is got available a, at. Uh, Tannins.com. So Tannins Magic Camp, uh, Tannins Magic Camp fam. Uh, Tannins.com is the exclusive seller. Get of the book. This book. Get this book just for this. I mean, this is great. I love this. This is hilarious. Uh, thank you for the copy. Like, get his book. He's got a special out. Uh, well, this, yeah, this audio only special is Harrison Greenbaum Live at Madison Square Garden. It's on Spotify, on all the things. So check that out. Yeah. And then and you can also follow me on social media at Harrison Comedy. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. HarrisonGreenbaum.com for all the tour dates. I mean, so, I mean, dude, such an interesting dude. I'm glad you're doing so great. Um, I'm glad the marriage. It's working out so it's far. It's working out so far. <laughs> She's amazing. Uh, can we make a bet? Yes, absolutely. That in within <laughs> four years, you come out of the closet. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. hundred dollars. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. And a baby elephant. And a baby elephant. And you know what? <laughs> I'll let you blow me. <laughs> I'll blow you. <laughs> we'll, t we'll, we'll flip a coin. I don't like that that turned him off. Well, no, maybe, I, <laughs> maybe, maybe you're not gay. So is it not gay if it's a bet? Is that how that works for you? I don't know. I'm just <laughs> someone's getting blown and someone's making a hundred bucks. This sounds like a great night in four years. <laughs> um, no, dude, you you're really funny. Uh, and you always, I love it because you we fuck with you. You have a great sense of humor, and uh, you kill on stage. And you're back in New York. And I love comics that go with their lives. You know, we're all, you got to do this, you got to get that. You you went, you do, you write a book, you do your special, you went to Vegas, you did all these shows, you gave up uh, the golden handcuffs to come back and do something new. And I think all you people should check him out. He's at the cellar now, he's back in the city. Come check him out, get his book, get his special. Watch him do stuff, and we got to get Danny. I want to do a special YKWD with magic. <laughs> Will you talk to Danny, and, and I'll talk to Joe, and we can do a magic off? That would be incredible. Come on, we can guys. Be, we can get some judges. We should get celebrity magicians. Would you do it, judges. Joe? I already said I would. Joe will do it. Danny. There's zero. Pr you offered me. You said the winner gets an audition at the cellar, and I still said no. What? <laughs> that, that was lying. And I would win. <laughs> I was lying. You would not win. Not with Harrison. Oh, I'm, in, I'm in the magic off. Oh, I didn't realize yeah. that. Oh, well, well now you, it's on. Yeah, well, well, Is he better than you, Danny? Uh, yeah. Because you called him a bitch magic magician before he came in. <laughs> you were like, yo, man, his, his fucking, his up-close magic is fucking bullshit. <laughs> you said his coin shit sucks. His finger, you said his fingers are too fat. I have short, tiny fingers. That's what he said. <laughs> he said you got little baby hands, you can't do coin tricks. <laughs> I love you, the idea of having hands so you, small I can't hide a quarter. You don't have a trick. That you could do for me right now to end. The I just show. did the elephant thing. Yeah, but can you do a real trick, <laughs> like a be like another trick where people can see it on the camera? Uh, well, I mean, maybe if I come back. <laughs> you don't have any like a coin thing or something. Well, so the, I think most of the tricks that I, I mean, the tricks that I do in my show are like, the, like I like to do the tricks that I've come up with and that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, and those stuff are like big stage things. Okay, so you can't, you know, you have close up magic. Not like not offhand. His fingers are too fat. That's right. I my, my, my little baby hands. Can you make a nut like a quarter become from behind my ear, like a, like an uncle, an old a bad uncle trick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. All right, will you come back on and do some magic? Yeah. Next time. Yeah, All that right. sounds good, dude. You got a spot to go to? Yes. I gotta go home. Uh, RobertKellyLive.com. Make sure to go. All my. I got Boston. I got uh, Rochester. Uh, not Rochester. Uh, I got Fort Mott, Wayne. I got all kinds of shows. Go to my website. Make sure you join the patreon.com slash Robert Kelly uh, and become a member. Go to comicwearables.com. Click the button. Get yourself some uh, YKWD gear. It's up there. Use code word 
Ladybugs, and you will get 20% off. I'm on the bonfire on Sirius XM 103 Faction Talk. You can check me out there four days a week with Big J Okerson. And uh, Bone to Pick Podcast with Paul Verzi is on YouTube and on everything where you get your podcast. You guys are the best. Guys, what do you got? Uh, Max Marcus Comedy, all social media. Follow me on Instagram at Danny Braff. And you can follow The Cheese Show by going to YouTube and typing in Cheese Show. Well, guys, we'll see you guys next time on You Know What, Dude? Podcast. Later. You've been listening to the YKWD Podcast. Thanks for listening. Now go back to your shitty jobs. Shitty jobs.